hey designers, you know, in this remote heavy world that we work with distributed teams and people all over the place, doing our UX work can kind of be a challenge. But there's a few things that we can do as designers to improve that working situation and give you the best possible and our partners the best possible experience in the work that we're doing. Hey there, I'm John Diello and I'm here to help you be a better designer. Let's jump into this topic. So the first thing is to understand why remote work is important, why it's actually appealing. Now, over the last year or two, we've gone through a global pandemic and people were forced into their homes. There was isolation in all kinds of situations. And so we were kind of forced into remote work really without learning the disciplines of how to do it well, or even really thinking strategically about what it looks like. So a lot of people really had some negative experiences with remote work, but the idea and the concept of remote work isn't just the fact that you're working in your home remotely from the office. It stems far deeper than that and actually goes a lot broader than just the idea of working outside of an office. But there's really three core things that have been huge for me working remotely as a part of a distributed team. The first one is that I can do my work wherever I need to do it. I'm not tied to a specific location or an office or a desk or a cubicle or even a building. I can move about and try different places and work from different environments to get the work done that I need to get done. And that's just a huge freedom for me and the teams that I've worked with. And in that movement and change of environment, there's a lot of health benefits that come along with that as well. You're not sitting in the same position and you're able to sort of move around and get different environments and just change things up. It's really powerful and I highly recommend that if you are working remotely, you try and take advantage of that when possible. The second big thing is that I can do my best work. You know, working in traditional office spaces, a lot of times there can be interruptions and it can be difficult to carve out focus time. And in our remote world, we have those same kinds of challenges. But working remotely, you get the ability to focus and hone in on your own schedule. You can actually schedule time when you're gonna step out of these digital spaces so you can actually do the best kind of work that you can do. And lastly, the idea of work-life balance. I know we hear that all the time, it's a huge cliche, but hear me out here. When you work from home or when you work from different locations or when you can do your work wherever you need to get it done, the benefits of that actually come back in many different ways. So that really helps me to balance my, give it my all while I'm at work, focus, get the best kind of thing done, and then also enjoy just life outside of work as well, because that balance is gonna make you a better designer and a better employee overall. So those are some of the benefits that come with remote work, but there's also some immense challenges. I wanna talk a little bit though about how we can do better remote work, and especially in the world of UX and in design, because we can't rely on the same things we did in office because our environment and our tools and the world really has changed a lot since then. In office tactics, you can't just do them outside of the office because it's actually far more draining. When you are remote, staring at a screen is often a very draining experience and coordinating conversation with latency and lag times and really the limitations of video conferencing software are really a drain on productivity. So how do we think creatively about this and how do we think about doing our best UX work while we're working remotely? while we're working as distributed teams. Well, the first big concept is the idea of synchronous versus asynchronous. Synchronous work is when you're all doing the same work together at the same time. Now, that together really can be through a digital tool, it could be through Sketch or Figma or Envision or Miro or whatever the tool is that you're using to collaborate, but synchronous work really means that you're all working together on the same schedule at the same time doing the same work. Meetings often represent themselves in synchronous work. You and me and another person, we can be in a meeting and we can chat and talk and work through a problem, and that's very synchronous. It's all synchronized work together. However, there's another kind of work called asynchronous work that needs to be deployed and really is the power in distributed teams and in remote work all along. Asynchronous work just means work is happening and it's well coordinated, but it's not happening at the same time. So a designer can walk into the situation, do some work, hand it off to someone else and work will happen after the fact or not at the same time or in a coordinated fashion. You actually are provided more opportunities to get the work done and you're not relying on a specific person or a specific piece of information at a specific time. Asynchronous work is very powerful and really is the core concept behind remote and distributed teams. But that's actually where we want to address the next problem is the next concept is remote versus distributed. Now you might hear the words remote and distributed and think of the same thing. But I think a colleague of mine named Amber Hansford for pointing out the difference between remote work, which is work that's just done remotely, versus distributed teams, which is that ability to work asynchronously and fluidly even when you're not working all at the same time. Now, why is this important to understand? Well, let's think about a real world scenario. Let's say I have a team 
in an Indian time zone, or I have a team in a China time zone, and they are all the way around the world on the other side of the globe. Well, maybe our core office is actually based in the Eastern Standard Time Zone, which is very common these days. But perhaps I also have some designers or some developers who are on the West Coast in Pacific Time Zone. Well, if you try to overlap all of those people at the very same time, everyone would have to be up for over 12 hours or 16 hours in some case, because those time zones and the core working hours don't overlap at all. And that's a huge problem. No one wants to be up from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. just to get our work done. No one can sustain that kind of work. We'll burn out in no time. So the concept of asynchronous work and distributed teams is what can really help us in these scenarios. We can plan our work and we can coordinate it and we can get our project and product managers together with the design work and the development work to make sure that we are all working together and coordinating our work and providing the kind of feedback that we need to always continually be moving forward. Now, as we pointed out, those people can't all be in the same meeting at the same time. So how do we work with that? Fortunately, our tools have gotten a lot better at this. You know, if we're working with a project management software, you can add comments and provide feedback right there for the next person that's gonna pick it up and work on it. Or if you have a design tool that you're using, you can allow for comments and feedback to come into your design even when you're not actively working on the file. So the difference between remote work and distributed work is a very different concept. And remote work can often be just taking those in-office practices and doing it outside of the context of a centralized location. Distributed teams, however, can and push us to that next level of working asynchronously, working together and making sure that we are making progress even when we're not in the same location or even in the same time zone to get our work done. So the last key consideration for us as we do UX work is to think about the channels of communication that we have available to us. Now, since we know that communication is one of the core pieces of successful distributed teams and remote work, we have to figure out how do we communicate clearly. Now, I wanna recommend a book for you to read. If remote work is new to you or you're looking to improve your remote work practices, check out Remote, Office Not Required by the folks over at Basecamp. And that's Jason Freed and David Hansen. And I'll leave a link in the description so you can grab a copy of that book. But one of the key concepts that they lay out in that book is the importance of understanding the channels and the modes of communication that you have. And to relate not just the channels, the ways you're communicating and the kinds of communication you have to the urgency and the importancy of it. So if you're to plot this on a spectrum, on one side, you have critical, urgent information. It needs to be communicated or consumed quickly and urgently. And this is for really serious stuff because there's some dependency that's on it that needs to be resolved. On the other side then, perhaps there's information that just needs to be communicated and consumed, but there's not really a timeline associated with it. And it's not really very urgent. And so as you think about this spectrum, you can begin to understand and look at the kinds of tools that you might use. Now, along with this spectrum of importance, you're also gonna see this spectrum of interruption. And as the information is more critical, there's gonna be more of a necessary component of interruption. The less critical, the less important the information, the less interruption that someone might need. So if you have like a server farm that goes down and your product is no longer reachable, that's really, really urgent. So that might demand some level of phone call or something that's highly interruptive, but it's also correlated with high importance and high urgency. It's critical information and it needs an immediate response. You can also look at tools like instant messaging, maybe if it's not quite as critical, but still highly critical to get the information across quickly. And as you get more and more away from importance and urgency, you begin to rely on other communication methods. Perhaps there's a comment feature left in a design tool, or perhaps you can use email as a form of communication. Or maybe if it's really not that important, you can drop it in snail mail and see how long it takes to get there just for fun. But as you can see, it's important to understand the difference between high urgent information. And as the critical nature of the information decreases, it doesn't have to be in the same channels that we typically use for those high critical, high important work. So when you're dealing with distributed teams, trading messages back and forth, can be really important to understand how critical is the information, how much do I actually need an answer, how quickly do I need it? How much is this piece of information blocking the project from moving forward? And is this blocker stopping a dependency from a bunch of other projects that are waiting on this thing to ship? So as UX designers, there are a lot of people that we work with. We work with other UX designers and with product leads and engineers and service people and marketing and all the other kinds of things that we need to work with. But at the end of the day, we're trying to keep this project moving forward to serve a product that ultimately is good for users and helps them succeed in the tasks that they do. So all this communication can really bog down our ability as designers to continue moving forward, but it doesn't have to. 
when we start to think about the priority of importance and what we actually need to make progress, you can get creative and start thinking about different ways of communicating. So I hope this helps today to think about the work that you do as a UX designer, the different tools that you have available and the ways that you can work. This new world of remote and distributed teams allows us to pick up our work, to focus on it for a set amount of time, and then we can set it down. And while we're not working on it, others can. We can solicit that feedback. We can get the people that we need to, to provide feedback, to put little pins on our board and to tell us where we think it could be improved or to open up engineering opportunities and to nudge the experience in the direction that serves the product and the user better. All in all, at the end of the day, our goal is really to produce the best design, the most elegant and simplistic design possible that's gonna accomplish and solve the need that we're serving. And we wanna get it done as efficiently and effectively as possible. So when you finish this video and you go back to work, you can begin to think about what are the best ways for you to collaborate and share information and gather information as needed. Is that video conference really the best way or would an email suffice? When you're working on a design, you need engineers feedback. Is an instant message the best opportunity, the best way for them to engage? Perhaps there are other ways we can think about including and gaining perspective that aren't sitting on a meeting day after day with people. So I hope this video has been helpful, just pointing out some of the different perspectives and ways we can think about remote work. I hope that as you continue to grow in your career, you can get creative with the kinds of ways that you offer feedback and the ways you garner feedback and the ways you collaborate with other people. You know, every day a new tool pops up and it's really exciting to see how remote collaboration and distributed collaboration is improving. Don't forget the importance that we're all here as UX designers to serve the product and the people using the product. Thanks for watching. And if you've subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. It really means a lot for me to be able to help and engage with other designers who are looking to grow and improve their design and creative abilities. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do to get the latest content as soon as it comes out. I have lots more videos planned and I'm super excited to share it. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button because it tells me what the best kinds of topics and things that I can share to help you grow in your abilities. And if you're looking to continue growing your design and creative abilities and see more of the kind of content I put out, you can check out this video here or this video here. I appreciate all the support. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope that you can go make something awesome today and collaborate better in the process of doing it.